If there's anyone who understands the true larrikin nature of Australia, it's Robin Moore. Growing up in the dust and loneliness of outback cattle and sheep stations from Tasmania to North Queensland, she studied the bushmen, the farmers, the men and the women of the regions and soon found that while we all share a home, Australians are a wide and varied bunch. I love our larrikin sense of humour in Australia. That has to be our most delicious asset and other nationalities probably don't understand our quirky sense of humour. Um, I saw a photo of a Northern Territorian man recently and it said, when asked if he'd lived in the Territory all of his life, he said, not yet. You know, we just kind of come out with things that, that floor people, that are unexpected. And we don't, um, we, our leaders are, are, we have some lovely jokes about our leaders and everybody is kept uh, at a, at a you know, consistent level. And, um, and I, I love that about us, that we're all pretty normal and natural and um, respond to each other equally. Even her own dad, at just five feet tall in very fat socks, was far from the typical Australian bushman. He was a stockman and a drover and a shearer chef and a wool baler. I just have this love affair with, with the land and open spaces and that laconic Australian sense of humour that the stockmen all had, where they didn't speak very long sentences, but it all was very clear speak. Now one of Australia's leading voiceover artists, Robin brings all those Australian characters back to life with a series of voices heard around the world in commercials and cartoons. When the girls came round to play, I forgot it was the day that my well to do rallies would you from overseas. Now hold back your thunderous applause, that is the spray and wipe commercial. I know, no, it's all right, you don't have to, you don't have to, no. It's a terrible ad, I know, but we've been selling you millions of dollars worth of products over the last 13 or 14 years. The new one goes, it won't stink up your rooms with 80% less fumes. All the English students are saying, gee, I wish I'd written that. For 20 years, she's also been the female voices of the irreverent short radio show, How Green Was My Cactus. Hello, kiddies. It's Cactus Fairy Story Time. Yay! And today, we've got a nursery rhyme called Old King Cole. Yay! But we're going to update it a bit and call it Old Commissioner Cole. Oh, not the wheat board kickbacks again. Oh, God, I hate daycare. 70 bucks a day for this poor boy. Wait till I tell my oldies. Oh, your parents don't care. That's why you're here. So shut up and listen. <laughs> With fellow voiceover professional Keith Scott, every week the series sends up everything from politicians and prime ministers... Uh, Valentine's Day or not, you know, I, I have a very, very busy role as, as the prime min min miniature of this country. And Jeanette, and don't you forget it, little woman. Oh, I never forget, John. I remember my husband didn't even know the meaning of the word wheat until he Googled it this morning. And nobody is safe. My husband and I, thank you all for listening to High Grain was one's cactus. I now declare this episode over. No matter which voice she's using, it's obvious Robin Moore has enjoyed a lifetime love affair with words. Words are so important because they're the juice. They actually are so powerful. They're powerful beyond measure because they can give us our authorship back. And the work we're doing with the Step to the Future Foundation is to invite children into being the author of their lives. It's a message she and the other Step to the Future speakers try to bring to students as they travel the country. We're all talking about the same kind of ability to be self-determining, to take responsibility for our lives, to be bigger than the circumstances, to not be influenced by peers who want to keep you little. With the right attitude, she says even the most difficult times can be turned around. Even when her father passed away, she managed to find something to make her smile and remember the good times instead of dwelling on the bad. The hearse went round Ballarat Cemetery and it went round and 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 round. And my sister and I were in the car behind the hearse and she got the giggles and um, I said, what is the matter? And she said, oh, this is so funny. And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, oh, Dad would love this. And I said, what do you mean? And she said, we've lost the plot. <laughs> You know, and it was just this lovely dead kind of joke to end his life because there at certain stages in his life he'd lost the plot and I had too. And we all sometimes lose the plot and it's about reconnecting with love and respect and forgiveness.
The taking of responsibility for what you do is among many reasons her favourite alter ego is a larrikin. It's none other than... Blinky Bill, the mischievous koala, because, <laughs> because he's a bit of a larrikin, he's sometimes inappropriate, and I'm sometimes in trouble, but I like to be accountable and clean up my mess afterwards. So I am the holder of the Australian spirit. And, um, and I love the word extraordinary, and I love girls and boys being their most extraordinariest. And, and I feel that um, being a part of Step to the Future through my voice coach, Robin Moore, <laughs> allows us to touch the guts of children and get into their minds and their spirits and pull forth their own magnificence. And one of my favorite moments in Step to the Future is when I reveal my alter ego to the children. And because they've grown up with me, they sometimes jump. There's a, there's a movement in the, in the theater. And then I give them a very special message. And it's, I think you are extraordinary. And every time you look at yourself in the mirror, you're gonna say, I am extraordinary, or you promise you'll do that. And these beautiful 15 and 16 year old children, you know, young people go with their eyes shut. And the beautiful team who work with us have turned the lights down. And it's just such a sacred spot. Mm. Can't, um, you can't top that. <laughs>